What's up my friends, welcome back! It's been a while since we had a drone project on this channel and basically all the drones projects that we had on this channel were made with Arduino and homemade. But I don't consider this one a homemade drone because basically all the parts are bought from eBay so are commercial parts and all we have to do is to assemble it together and that's not really homemade. So guys, in this video I'll show you what we need and how to build this basic but very big drone. This is based on the F450 from DJI which is a very big drone but in my case I'm using 3D printed parts in order to save some money. I've tried to use the most low cost prices that I found on eBay. So the total price for this project including the radio controller which won't be this one is around $150. The radio controller that I'm using right now is a little bit more expensive. But don't worry I'll put some links below with compatible radio controllers that you will find from eBay for very cheap. In this way this project will be as low cost as possible. You will have the part list with all the prices, the schematic and the tutorial below this video in case that you want to make the same drone. I know that this project is very easy and very basic but I really hope that you will like it. So let's see how to select all the parts that we need for this project, how to solder the components, how to program the flight controller and make this entire drone. And also make sure that you activate the notification bell for future videos. So guys, let's get started. GLC PCB is sponsoring this video. They provide fast and best value prototyping services. With their online and instant quote, fast fabrication and competitive prices, you can save a lot of time and money. So quote now, upload the Gerber files of your PCB and for only $2 plus shipping, you can order PCBs in less than 5 minutes. What's up my friends, welcome back. Today's project will be very simple to make because we already have all the parts bought online and all we have to do is to assemble the drone, flash the new firmware, get the radio connection and probably tune some settings up. We will see the 3D printed frame, what parts we need, how to use the base flight extension and flash the new firmware to the flight controller board and then how to make the connection to the radio controller with PPM signal and mount the entire drone. I will also explain why we need each part and give you a few advices in case that you want to make the same project. So let's see what we need for this project. Let's start with the brain of the drone. Any basic drone will need a flight controller. In my past tutorials this was made with an Arduino microcontroller and a bunch of other sensors for magnetic fields, for accelerations, for gyro movements, pressure and so on. In this case I will use a commercial board and this is the Afroflight or NASI32 Rev6. I wanted to have a barometric sensor because I want altitude control as well for my drone, for a better flight. You can easily find other cheaper boards, but not all will have barometric sensor. So this board has the following sensors. First we have the accelerometer and the gyro sensor. We also have a magnetometer and also a barometer, which is this component here. On the bottom part of the board we also have two pins in case that we want to connect a ultrasonic distance sensor with the trig and echo pins. I've bought this board for around $23 and links are below. Ok guys so next we need the power distribution board. Most people just solder wires together and distribute the power to the ESCs. But that will look a little bit bad and this board is only 5 more dollars. This one has two back converters on board for 12 and 5 volts and 3 amps output. So we could supply the flight controller in case that our ESCs don't have a BEC as well and also a possible camera for FPV, servos and more. Also we supply the voltage from the battery to this board and then we have 4 outputs, one for each motor. Ok so next components are the ESCs or electronic speed controllers and also the motors. I found a pack of 4 motors and 4 CMOG firmware ESCs on eBay for just $38. These brushless motors are 920 kV and this kV means the amount of rotations per minute for each volt. So in this case we have 920 rotation per volt and if we run this motor with a 3S battery of 12 volts that will give us a maximum speed of 11,000 rotations per minute. You will also see another number on the motor, in this case it's 2212 where the first two digits are the stator diameter and the last two digits are the stator length. The stator is the part of the motor that doesn't rotate and that is the metal part with the coils inside. I carefully removed the safety below the motor and opened it up so we could see the coils with more details. 
and yes, the stator is 22 by 12 mm. Also, have in mind that we need two clockwise and two counterclockwise motors, and that means two screws will close in this way, and the other two will get tight in the other way, so the propellers won't fly away during flight. These ESCs are rated at 30 amps, and that's more than enough. The drone will be quite big, and that's why we need big motors as well. For example, these small motors from my Arduino based drone are not good enough for today's project. Ok, now let's talk about the radio controller. In this case, the flight controller has three types of input, and those are 8 PWM signals, one PPM signal, or an SBUS SAM signal. So you could use any kind of receiver, because usually receivers will have at least one type of this kind of signals. I'm using my Radiolink 8010 radio controller, and this has by default the RS12 DS receiver. But I've also bought a smaller one that has an SBUS or PPM output, with all the channels. Since this radio controller is more than $150, I will leave you a link for the FlightSky controller for only $40, and that will have 6 channels, and that's more than enough. You will have different schematics below, in case that you are using PWM or PPM receiver, and later we'll see the configuration for the flight controller for these two types of signals, so don't worry. Ok, so finally we need the battery and propellers. For the battery I've bought this cheap one for only $16. This LiPo battery is a Vogue brand of 3 cells, so a maximum voltage of 12.6 volts, and a capacity of 1500 mAh, which is a little bit low. If you want more flight time, consider a bigger capacity battery, so see the different options in the tutorial below this video. As for the propellers, I bought these 1045 plastic propellers. And that means they are 10 inches long, and they have an angle of attack of 45 degrees. These are quite big, and the bigger is the propeller, the more unstable will be the motor while rotating. So for that I also have these carbon fiber propellers, that are a little bit smaller. Interesting fact, carbon fiber is conductive, so if you want to test if something is real carbon fiber, just take the multimeter and test for conductivity. Ok guys, the only remaining part is the drone body. For that I found this F450 drone on eBay for around $37. But if you want to save some money and you have a 3D printer, you could just do what I've done and print the body. I found some STL files with the exact shape for this drone. This might not be as strong as the commercial body, but this will be good enough for this cheap project. You will have 4 arms and 2 plates for the bottom part and top part of the drone. You should print 2 arms with one color and the other 2 with a different color, in order to know which is the front and rear part of the drone. I've used PLA material with 3 parameters, 0.2mm layer height, 0.4mm nozzle and 25% infill. In order to give this a more professional look, I've also bought some extra parts for a few more cents. So these are some 3mm nuts, a special design to be fixed into the plastic and by that have a metal thread instead of just inserting the screw directly into the plastic. So these parts will cost a few more cents, so this is what you have to do. First, make the hole a little bit bigger with a 3mm drill. Go as deep as the length of the screws that you are going to use. Now take your soldering iron and push against this threaded nut till you get flat with the 3D printed part. You have to let it cool down and now you have a strong screw hole for M3 screws. So do the same for all the legs. We have 4 holes on one side of the leg and 2 more on the other side. So this is all that we need for this project. I hope you now have an idea of how to select your parts. So let's mount the drone, but before that just a final quick explanation. The radio receiver will give the signal to the flight controller with the values for throttle, yaw, pitch and roll. The flight controller with that information and the data from the sensors will control the motors. To do that it will send a PWM signal to each ESC. These ESCs will control the speed of the motors and by that adjust the angle of the drone and move it around. At the same time the battery will be connected to the distribution board and that will supply each ESCs with 12 volts from the battery. Ok, so let's see. I first screen place the frame of the drone. I'm using 1 cm long M3 screws and the threads that we have inserted before. I first add the top plate with 4 screws for each arm and then I add the bottom plate with 2 screws for each arm. Ok, so that easy we have the body of the drone, so let's put it aside. So now take and solder all the pins for the flight controller. These are the pins for the ESCs, and we will need only 4, because this is a quadcopter. These 8 pins here are for the radio receiver. I use a PPM receiver, so I only need the first 3. 
if you have a PWM receiver, you'll need to connect a cable to each pin. For that, see the schematics below. Finally, we will connect the battery to these pins in order to read the battery level. And also, if you have one, you could also solder a buzzer to these pins. Ok, now I take the power distribution board and solder some black and red wires. You should solder a 15cm long wire to each positive and negative pad of the power distribution board. Black is for negative and red is for positive, obvious. Now take two more thin wires and solder those to these small pads here. These wires will be the battery input that will go to the battery level pins on the flight controller. To the main input I solder a battery connector. This connector will later go to the LiPo battery. Ok, now I take the top part of the drone and I make some measurements. This part already has some holes, but these are for a different flight controller. I center the board and I mark all the holes and then I make those with a 3mm drill bit. To fit the board in place I will use some 3mm plastic screws, in order to avoid short circuits and noise. I add those screws to the drone body like this. On top I add the power distribution board and I add more nuts as spacers. I will add two nuts in order to get more clearance. Then on top I place the flight controller board. You have to look at this arrow here on the main board and that will mark the front face of the drone. In my case that will point in that way and this will be a quad X shape. Have in mind that if that is the front face of the drone, two motors will rotate in this way and the other two in the other way. So select the motors in such a way that the screw will tight in the opposite direction of the rotation of the motors. I fix in place each motor with the given screws. Now the ESCs that I have don't have a bullet connector as the motors do. For that, for a few more cents, I also bought some bullet connectors as well. I first measure the distance and I cut the wire to length. I solder a female bullet connector to each of the three wires of the ESC. So now it's much easier to connect the motor to the ESC. I fix in place the ESC on the drone using some zip ties. Now I have each motor and each ESC on each arm of the drone. Now solder the red and black wires from the ESC to the distribution board. I finally remove those wires that I soldered before because the ESC's wires were long enough. Once again, if that is the front part of the drone, this will be motor 1. This here will be motor 2, then we have motor 3 and motor 4. And this is very important to know. So connect the ESC's wires to the flight controller board and knowing that these are the pins for each motor. You should remove the red wire from all ESCs but one. We only need one 5V connection. I now connect the radio receiver to the PPM pin to ground and 5V from the flight controller. I also solder this buzzer to these pins. I now solder the thin wires from the power board to the battery level input pins on the flight controller. So now the system is ready. We need to flash a new firmware and make some settings for our drone. So for that you have to go to Google and search for Base Flight. Enter this first link and if you are using Chrome, install this extension. Now you should run the Base Flight in Chrome. You should remove the buzzer for now, otherwise it will be a little bit annoying because the battery is not connected. Now you should solder together these two pads for the boot mode. So once you do that, connect the USB cable to the flight controller. In Base Flight, go to Firmware Flasher. Check for the no reboot sequence, do not verify and full chip erase. Now click the load firmware online button. After that make sure that the USB cable is connected and click flash firmware. Once it's completed remove the USB cable and desolder the connection for the boot pads. Now connect back the USB cable and in base flight click connect. And now as you can see I'm connected and I get the real time values from the drone. Now let's see a little bit of settings. First go in configuration. Make sure you select the quad X shape. Also in my case I check this PPM input for the radio signal. If you are using a PWM receiver don't mark this checkbox. Now I click save. You will see the LEDs flashing. Once that is done go to the receiver tab. Now you should check if you receive the data. As you can see I receive 8 channels in my case but you will need at least 5. Now let's set the modes of the drone and for that we should use each of the auxiliary switches. For example, when AUX2 is high, I enable the motors. When AUX1 is high, I will go into barometric sensor mode for altitude hold and so on. 
you must set at least the arm motor mode to one switch. Then you should click save and we are ready to go. Just one more step. Make sure that the board is flat on the table and click the calibrate accelerometer. Then calibrate the magnetometer and rotate the drone 360 degrees for 30 seconds. Now disconnect the USB cable and power on the transmitter and now connect the LiPo battery. I turn on the arm motor switch and the green LED will turn on. Now increase throttle and the motor will start spinning. Make sure that you calibrate the ESCs first. For that you will see a tutorial below. Also make sure that the motors are rotating in the correct direction. Don't add the propellers for now because this might be dangerous. So as you can see everything works ok. Place the battery below the drone and secure it in place with elastic bands or velcro. So now we are ready for tests. So for that go outside because this drone is very powerful. With the drone powered off add the propellers and make sure the direction of rotation once again and that the thrust will go downwards. So enable the motors and there you go. So guys, the drone flies quite well. I'm not a very good pilot, so it was a bit hard for me to control it. Using big propellers the arms were vibrating a lot, so I might use some more infield for the parts to make it stronger or maybe use a tripper blade smaller propeller. I hope that you like this very simple project with off the shelf components. So now you could make your own drone and after that you could share your results. If you learned something new consider subscribing. And please make sure you activate the notification bell, because otherwise you won't receive notifications when I upload a new video. Also consider supporting my work on Patreon, so thanks again and see you later guys.